we want to use linear programming to find the maximum value of the objective function z equals 6x plus 17y subject to the constraints given by the linear inequalities shown here. So our first step is to find the feasible region, which is the solution to the system of linear inequalities. Once we find the solution of the feasible region, we'll find the corner or vertices of this region, which will allow us to find the maximum value of our objective function under these constraints. So we'll begin by graphing these, and because we have four inequalities, we want to find the region that's shaded four times. Let's go ahead and graph these from the bottom up. So let's first graph y is greater than or equal to zero. So we'll begin by graphing the line y equals zero, which is a horizontal line passing through zero on the y-axis, which is actually the x-axis here. Now we want to determine which side of the line to shade. Because this y is greater than or equal to zero, we want to shade above the line. Instead of shading though, I'm going to indicate this with arrows. So we'd shade above this horizontal line. Using arrows can sometimes be helpful when we have so many shadings on one coordinate plane. Next we have the inequality x is greater than or equal to zero. So we'll first graph x equals zero, which is a vertical line passing through zero on the x-axis, which is actually the y-axis here. And we have x is greater than or equal to zero, so we'll shade to the right. So notice how the double shaded region right now is the first quadrant. Also notice, because each inequality includes equals, each line is going to be solid. Next, we have the inequality three x plus five y is less than or equal to 90. So we'll graph the line three x plus five y equals 90. And let's go ahead and graph this by determining the x and y intercepts. So we'll complete a table of values. In order to find the y-intercept, we'll set x equal to zero. In order to find the x-intercept, we'll set y equal to zero. So notice when x is equal to zero, we would have the equation five y equals 90. Divide both sides by five, and we have y equals 18. So the y-intercept is the point zero comma 18. Next, in order to find the x-intercept, we'll set y equal to zero. So notice if y is equal to zero, we'd have the equation three x equals 90, dividing both sides by three, we have x equals 30. So the x-intercept is the point 30 comma zero. Let's go ahead and plot these two points. Zero comma 18 is approximately here, and 30 comma zero would be here. So our line passes through these two points and looks something like this. To determine what side to shade, we'll select a test point. We can select any point not on the line. Let's go ahead and select the origin with coordinates zero comma zero. So using our test point, zero comma zero, we'll substitute zero for x and y in our original inequality here. So we'd have three times zero plus five times zero, which is zero, is less than or equal to 90. And this is true, and since the point zero comma zero is below this line, and our test is true, we want to shade below this red line, or in this direction here. So notice how the triple shaded region now is this triangular region. And now for the last inequality, we have six x minus y is less than or equal to 48. So we want to begin by graphing the line six x minus y equals 48. And again, we'll use a table of values and find the x and y intercepts. So if we set x equal to zero, we can find the y intercept. If we set y equal to zero, we can find the x intercept. So when x is zero, we would have negative y equals 48. Dividing both sides by negative one, we have y equals negative 48. So the y-intercept is the point zero comma negative 48. And now we'll find the x-intercept 
by setting y equal to zero. So if y is zero, we'd have the equation six x equals 48, dividing both sides by six. We have x equals eight. So the x-intercept is the point eight comma zero. So zero comma negative 48 would be approximately here, and eight comma zero would be approximately here. So our line passes through these two points and looks something like this. And again, let's go ahead and select the origin as our test point. So we'll substitute zero for x and zero for y in the original inequality, which would give us zero minus zero, or just zero, is less than or equal to 48. This is true. And since the origin is on this side of the line, we want to shade the same side, so we're going to shade above or on this side of the line. So notice how the region that shaded four times is this quadrilateral here. So our next step is to find the coordinates of the vertices and then substitute those values into the objective function to determine the maximum value. Before we do this though, let's go to a different graph that I made using some software. Now let's focus on determining the coordinates of the four vertices. We have one, two, three, four points to find the coordinates of. Well obviously this point here is the origin, zero comma zero. This point here was the y-intercept of the line 3x plus 5y equals 90, which was 18. So this point has coordinates 0 comma 18. This point here was the x-intercept of the line 6x minus y equals 48, which was the point 8 comma 0. Again, we had these two points in our table of values when we graphed the lines of these inequalities. But now this fourth point here is going to be a little more challenging to determine. It would be the point of intersection of the two lines we graphed when graphing these two inequalities. So we want to find the intersection point of the line 6x minus y equals 48 and the line 3x plus 5y equals 90. So we're going to solve this as a system of equations and we could either use substitution or elimination. In the last example, we used substitution. So for this example, let's use elimination. If we wanted to eliminate the y terms, notice how they're already opposites. So if this was minus 5y, we could add the equations together and eliminate the y terms. So let's go ahead and multiply this first equation by 5 and write it below the second equation. So we would have 30x minus 5y equals 5 times 48 is 240. We'll leave the second equation the same. So we have 3x plus 5y equals 90. And now we'll go ahead and add these two equations together. Notice how the y terms sum to zero. So we have 33x equals 330 dividing both sides by 33, notice how we have x equals 10. And now to find y, we'll perform substitution into one of the original equations. Let's go ahead and use equation two. So if we know x equals 10, and using equation two, we'd have three times 10 plus five times y equals 90. Notice here we'd have 30, so if we subtract 30 on both sides, we'd have 5y equals 60, divide both sides by 5, and we have y equals 12. So the point of intersection here has coordinates 10 comma 12. So now our last step is to take the coordinates of these four points, sub them into the objective, and the largest value for z would be the maximum value of our objective function 
under these constraints. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. Let's first evaluate z at the point zero comma zero. One way to show this would be to write z of zero comma zero. So we'll substitute zero for x and zero for y into our equation. So of course we'd have six times zero plus seventeen times zero, which is zero. Next, let's go ahead and use the point zero comma eighteen. So z of zero comma eighteen would be equal to six times zero plus seventeen times eighteen. If you haven't seen this notation before, it's very similar to function notation, but we can use this when we have a function of more than one variable. So we're subbing zero for x and eighteen for y. Seventeen times eighteen equals three hundred six. Next we would have z of eight comma zero, which would be equal to six times eight plus seventeen times zero, which is forty eight. And then finally we have z of ten comma twelve, so we'll substitute ten for x and twelve for y. So we'd have six times ten plus seventeen times twelve, which is equal to sixty plus two hundred four, which gives us a sum of two hundred sixty four. So notice how the largest value of z is three hundred six, which is the maximum value of our objective function given these constraints, and that occurs when x equals zero and y equals eighteen. So we'll say the maximum of z is three hundred six at the point zero comma eighteen. Okay, I hope you found this explanation helpful.